Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. Welcome to a special episode of Talking Head Pain. In this three-part mini-series, we explore migraine from the healthcare professional's perspective. I'm Eric Stone, Director of Data, Learning, and Evaluation at GHLF. I'm also a migraine patient and an advocate, and I'll be your host for this episode. This series is a part of our Upend Migraine Project, designed to help healthcare providers, especially those in primary care and emergency care settings, better understand migraine prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and management. In this third episode, we're talking about how to manage acute migraine attacks in clinical settings. We'll explore some of the real-world challenges providers face, how acute treatments differ from preventive options, and what goes into selecting the right treatment approach for each patient, especially when comorbidities and other complexities are involved. Joining us is Dr. Alicia Dubajonk, a nurse practitioner and headache specialist who has developed headache care programs in both Iowa and Oregon and is a national leader in headache education. Dr. Dubajonk, thank you so much for being here. Can you start by telling us and our listeners a little bit about yourself and your background? Absolutely. Thank you for having me. My name is Alicia Dubajonk. I am a headache specialist nurse practitioner. I have been practicing since 2014 in outpatient general neurology and uh, received my added qualification in headache certification through the National Headache Foundation in 2018. I was able to launch Iowa's first dedicated headache program through Genesis Health System in 2022, and then recently moved to the Pacific Northwest to set up a program for another underserved area here in Oregon. Wow, fantastic. It sounds like your work has really spanned the entire country. We're so excited to talk to you today. I'm curious, what are some of the key challenges that you see when treating patients with acute migraine attacks in clinical settings? So there's so many challenges. Certainly we run into challenges with coverage. We run into challenges with patients who might have contraindications or can't take certain medications. There's always the issue with so many different medications causing rebound or medication adaptation headache. And then there's more patient-specific challenges, such as patients waiting to take their migraine treatment until the migraine is severe, or starting with a medication maybe that is less effective for them, and then following that with the more effective medication, which causes problems. Yeah, it's so interesting to hear you say that healthcare coverage is one of the barriers. I know one of the things that I'm learning throughout these interviews as a patient is that there's so many other systemic problems that are inhibiting good migraine care for patients. And I guess to follow that up, what are the other systemic or resource-based barriers that you see providers facing and, and how does that impact how you're managing patients or how they might be managing patients? Yeah, I think really I would divide kind of these systemic barriers into probably two main issues, one being insurance coverage for a variety of things, even some of our older medications. Sometimes I'm surprised by how much we have to fight for them. And then you have to know there's so much knowledge to kind of try to hold on to as a provider. You know, I accept 50 different insurance plans and they all have their own preferences and trying to keep those straight. I also find that there's a big barrier in provider knowledge, which is why programs like this are so important. I get a lot of patient referrals where they've even, maybe even the patient has advocated for themselves and asked about some of these newer products or treatments or treatments that they've never had access to before. And a lot of the feedback I get from these patients is the providers they were seeing previously didn't know enough about the products or they didn't know how to get them covered. And so patients really have a problem with lack of access to quality treatments for migraine. Yeah, obviously you are very involved in the headache space and and you stay very up to date on the latest research, I imagine. Um, I'm curious what advice you would give to other providers who are looking to learn more about migraine and maybe you don't know where to start or don't have the time. You know, what are some techniques and strategies that you use to stay informed on the latest with migraine? I do find it helpful to be involved in some of the national organizations, the American Headache Society, the American Academy of Neurology, being some of the top ones. There's also several others, National Headache Foundation, Association of Migraine Disorders, lots of different entities. And I find that being involved in those and seeking out those resources through those professional organizations is extremely helpful. 
The American Headache Society, which I'm involved with, does have great programming, virtual programming for non-headache providers, which I always encourage people to go look for. If, depending on the provider and their comfort level, and if they're able to, based on their employer, sometimes it is helpful to have contact with the pharmaceutical representatives. A lot of times they kind of get a bad rap for pushing their drugs, but I do find that it's really, really helpful to keep me up to date, not only on, you know, the newer medications that are coming out, but how to use them. And even more importantly, maybe maybe not more important, but just as important, how to get them covered. I like that you said that it's important for non-headache specialists or not people who are not prior involved in headache to learn more and that there's resources that are built specifically for them. I know that's a huge barrier. I want to kind of shift the conversation to acute treatments and acute migraine. How do you explain the difference between acute and preventive migraine treatments to patients? And why is that difference so important for providers to consider as a part of an effective management plan? Preventative migraine treatment is something that the patient does or takes on a regular scheduled basis to decrease the frequency and severity of their migraine attacks. Acute treatment, on the other hand, is a treatment or medication that the patient will take while they are having a migraine attack with a goal of reducing or eliminating the migraine and associated symptoms. It's really important, actually, to have a discussion about both types of treatment and why both types of treatment may be needed. I often will use an analogy with patients of house fire. If you, being a migraine patient, are engulfed in the flames of migraine, and I come at you with a kitchen fire extinguisher, at best, that's going to maybe take the edge off, right? It's not usually going to be fully effective, for obvious reasons, in the fire analogy anyway. What we really need is the prevention, which in this example would be the firefighters with the hoses and the hydrants. They can come in, they'll get all those flames down. And then when you get pop-ups from the embers, you can hit it with a kitchen fire extinguisher and it works beautifully. So it's important to know the difference between those treatments. And for a lot of patients, specifically patients with chronic migraine or high-frequency episodic migraine, where they have a lot of monthly migraine days, it's really important to have both. Yeah, as a migraine patient, I can resonate with the analogy of a house fire being appropriate for what a migraine attack feels like. So I appreciate how dramatic that is. And I think that's a wonderful way to think about it. Can you explain some of the differences between maybe some of the older migraine treatments and some of the newer ones that you're seeing now? When we talk about acute migraine treatment, there are a few kind of basic standards. In the 1990s, we saw the advent of the triptans. Uh, Sumatriptan, formerly known as Imitrex, was kind of the first player. And it was really a game changer for patients. A lot of times prior to that, patients were using different medications, NSAIDs, Tylenol, narcotics, unfortunately, DHE or ergotamines, which have their own limitations. And even though these medications are often still used. When the triptans came out, it was really a game changer because they were more migraine specific usually than the other products. That being said, there were limitations and are limitations to triptans as well, which is why from the science and research side of it, we've continued to try to look for and develop additional treatment options. And we've really been able to change the landscape of acute migraine treatment quite dramatically in the last 10, 15 years or so through research. And now we not only have the medications I've already mentioned, but now we have G-PANS, we've got DITANS, um, we've got other ways to deliver some of our more traditional medications that make them more effective. Yeah, it sounds like there's a ton out there right now. One of the things that is really important to the Upend Migraine Project is this theme of finding balance between providing consistent and uniform migraine care, but also being able to customize that care to each patient. We conducted a survey of some migraine patients asking about their treatment journeys, and one of the things that came up consistently was the management of comorbidities and contraindications with their medications for migraine. So how do you manage comorbidities and contraindications when thinking about what migraine treatment may be the best for a patient? When I think about acute migraine treatment specifically, we're often looking at comorbidities that need to be considered and addressed when making treatment plans. 
one of the first things we think about is cardiovascular risk factors. People with uncontrolled blood pressure, uncontrolled diabetes, history of things like strokes or heart attacks. Traditionally, this is a really difficult patient population to treat acutely because they cannot use the triptans or the ergotamines that I mentioned earlier. Those can cause vasoconstriction and can put them at additional risk for cardiovascular events. In the last several years, with kind of the advent of some of these newer medications, that is changing. We are seeing that these patients are doing well on the GPANs, the DITANs that are out now. These are the newer medications. They've been studied in patients with cardiovascular risk, which gives us additional confidence. And whether we're using newer products or older products, in general, when I'm looking at a patient like this, it's often a case where I might need to think about more than one option. If we're looking at the generic medications, maybe for some reason the patient doesn't have access to the newer things, you know, we can start really doing some very creative things with using some of the older medications or treatments. We can use certain NSAIDs or analgesics with limits, of course. We can do things like combination therapy with dopaminergic medications, antihistamine medications, and non-pharmacological interventions that the patient can do themselves. There's also, which I didn't mention before, there's also a whole group of neuromodulation devices that are out now. And these are fantastic treatments, um, specifically developed and tested for migraine, very effective, sometimes in the studies, just as effective as some of the medications. And these are really nice for a variety of patients because they don't have side effects. And to our point with our patients with comorbidity, if they need it, it can be combined with virtually anything. So those are really good options. The other comorbidity that I run into on a daily basis is medication adaptation headache. In, as a headache specialist, you see so much chronic migraine. Not only chronic migraine, but sometimes chronic daily migraine. And it's so easy for those patients to get into a habit of using their acute medications frequently because they're just trying to live their lives, right? They're, this is not malicious. This is not something a patient is doing wrong, which is why I'm glad we've changed the words that we use when we talk about patients with this problem. But it's an easy trap to get into. And the G-Pants specifically, Ubrojapant, Remedjapant, Zavegipant, these medications are really the only class of migraine-specific acute medications that we use that is not going to cause rebound or medication adaptation headache. So that class specifically is very important as a part of the regimen for my patients who do struggle with using their as-needed medications more often than they should. Yeah, th thank you so much for your answers as a patient. And just these conversations like these really make me think about how little dialogue there is between patients and providers. And I'm always so inspired by the insights from providers. And it makes me think about all all my patient experiences in a completely new light and, and just like, oh, well, yeah, I hadn't really considered that angle. To kind of wrap up our conversation, I want to back to the healthcare professionals who don't specialize in headache medicine. What's one thing you wish they knew or maybe did differently when they're treating somebody who is, say, in the middle of a migraine attack? One of the things that I wish is that non-headache providers would be a bit more aggressive. And what I mean by that, I'm not suggesting they do risky things. That's not what I'm saying. But I did kind of just mention it earlier. So often patients at the onset of their migraine, they're starting with kind of what they feel is like the least offensive thing, right? I'm going to start with drinking a bunch of water and maybe I'm going to lay down. I'm going to put my ice cap on and then that doesn't work. So I'm going to take my NSAID of choice perhaps because that's over the counter. So that's a less concerning medication in their mind. And then that's not doing it. So now several hours into the migraine, they're finally taking their migraine specific higher efficacy treatment. The problem with that is that there is about a 30 to 60 minute time frame from the time your nervous system starts getting stimulated to trigger a migraine to the time that migraine signal enters the central portions of the brain. At that point, that's called central sensitization. And a patient is more sensitive to everything and everything is going to make them feel worse. And their medications aren't going to work as well at that point. So what I wish was kind of more the general approach would be figure out what your best tool or combination is. Your most effective. Maybe that's going to be a triptan by itself. Maybe that's going to be a triptan with an NSAID. Maybe it's going to be a G-pad. Whatever it is, 
use that first out the gate as soon as you start having your migraine symptoms. Because when we just kind of sit around and let these things fester, it's just going to perpetuate the situation. So is it a general rule in healthcare, we like to start with the less concerning things or the things we see as not as strong. But in migraine, I actually like to think about it the opposite. Migraine is one of the most debilitating conditions on earth. You need to hit it right away. You need to hit it hard with something really effective to get the best outcome. And if you have a, a treatment like that, you actually, on the back end, end up reducing your frequency of your migraine attacks in general. I love the sense of urgency you bring to migraine treatment. That is wanted. And patients, I'm sure there's people listening right now, patients who are you know, screaming from the rooftops, yes, please do more of that. Yeah, thank you so much for this conversation today and everything you've said. Like I said, this has been very inspiring and insightful for me, and I look forward to more opportunities to have conversations like this. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Well, that's it for this episode of Talking Head Paint for the Healthcare Professional, and it also marks the conclusion of our special three-part Upend Migraine mini-series. We hope this conversation provided valuable insights into how healthcare providers can approach the treatment of acute migraine, navigate real-world challenges, and tailor care to meet each patient's unique needs. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And if you have a moment, leave us a rating or review. It'll help more people like you find us. If you have any thoughts, questions, or suggestions for us, we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email at podcasts at ghlf.org. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network.